Aloha YouTube, what is up? Untied Hawaii here with episode 4, fourth episode of Art of the Flip. Before we get into what today's lecture is going to be on, I wanted to get back at this first. So there is still time, I think by the time this video is uploaded, there will be about 3 or 4 days left. So if you guys have not already, please enter that raffle. We're giving away a free Yeezy V2 cream. DS. You guys don't know what DS is, watch episode 1 of Art of the Flip. But yeah, make sure you enter this. The link will be down in the description below. You have to click the plus one next to the subscribe buttons and stuff on the link or else it won't count. So make sure you do that. Actually, what you guys are here for is lesson four. Like I said, I'm a professor, Professor Untied. And if you guys haven't already, you got to watch episode one, two and three to kind of understand where we are right now at lesson four. So lesson four, actually, which was requested by you guys via Twitter poll, I think it was like 49% to 51% that you guys wanted this episode. So this episode will be about how to correctly shoes used or new. There's not a set formula for a correct and incorrect way to do this, but there are a lot of good guidelines that I can give you guys to show you how I price my shoes and price them to move pretty quickly. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with the new shoes because new shoes are easy. It's very clean cut. There's no changes in new shoes. You'll either have it new or it's not new. So a new shoe, like I said, is dead stock. That means it hasn't been worn, hasn't been tried on for the most part. No creases, nothing weird. It's 100% new. That pricing for the most part will always remain the same. So you can find that price or the market price on StockX, GOAT, eBay, and that price will pretty much be the same wherever you look. So if a shoe is selling for like this cream is like 450, I think right now new. If it's selling for about 450 on StockX, you can expect that that's where the market will be contingent like everywhere. So it won't vary too much. You might see some where people will price it like maybe 15, $20 lower so they can make it sell quicker. But for the most part, if you look at the median, so whatever the highest number it's selling for and the lowest number, you kind of just find the middle ground. So there might be some that sell for 500. There might be some that sell for 400, but that median will be 450. And that's the ground you want to look at. And that's what I mean by competitive market pricing. You're not pricing it too high. You're not pricing it too low. You're pricing it exactly where people will buy. People will buy, trust me. It, it's pretty set in stone. If you guys have a Yeezy for the most part, it will sell. Most DS shoes have bidding like numbers already on there, so you guys will move those. Concept that we're gonna be going over right here though, you sneakers, there is no formula on how to price you sneakers correctly. There's not anything. It's not like you can say, okay, so there's one scratch on this shoe. Every scratch is minus $5 from the total or it's missing the box and so now that's an automatic minus 50. There's nothing like that. Every used shoe is different and every shoe has a specific pricing. So you really, really, really have to watch what the market is on used shoes because people will come at you. Like they come at me all the time. They say, oh, you're pricing your used shoes like crazy high. And again, that's not me pricing it. That's what the market is pricing it at. So the best way to find used shoe prices is to look at GOAT app. I know I say it all the time, but I really use this resource for everything I do. I'm not sponsored by them, but it really is like the most efficient way to find prices for used shoes. SockX doesn't let you sell used shoes, so that's kind of where we can't look at all. And eBay, it's a little bit harder because the pricing will change all the time on there. There's not really any middle ground. GOAT, you can find it really easy. So if you look over here, what you do is you go look onto the shoe, you click on the price, the size condition that you have, and then if you scroll down, it says recently sold. So recently sold, you can see the dates of prices that these shoes have sold for actually in that same condition. If you put it in as used, it's gonna show you use prices that it sold for, not new prices. So that's really nice, cause that way you can kind of find the middle number between those six and you kind of have a good middle ground. That's only step one of five price used shoes. Step two is you have to not only look at the prices it sold for, but you have to look at the prices that they're selling for right now so you click on that sneaker you click on you shoes that are selling right now in the same size and you look at what other people are pricing their shoes for and like i said it's going to be different every single time some of them will have markings some will have no box some will have like bad creases some will be missing the insoles you really have to check what prices your exact condition are going for so for instance let's say we're looking for a v2 cream with no box so we're gonna dis we're not even gonna look at the ones with boxes and we're just gonna look only for the ones without boxes. So you're just gonna click on those, click on those, look at the prices they're selling for. And for the most part, I would say that 
if it's in pretty good condition, even if there's no box, you could sell a Yeezy Cream for about like 380-ish at the used price, and that's a good median. So that's the two kind of two-fold method that I use to price used shoes. Again, it's not exactly set every single time there will be variations and the thing is is that you can have priced a shoe today for five hundred dollars and that shoe literally tomorrow could be worth six hundred seven hundred eight hundred dollars or it could be on the opposite end of that spectrum and be worth a hundred bucks you really don't know because the market is continually in flux especially for you shoes you'll always see that the limited edition shoes will sell for higher values than non-limited edition so a good rule of thumb is to never set GRs for higher than the selling retail rate. I say that because you can't flip a GR if they're still sitting on shelves. You just can't do it. They will have those on shelves so there's no demand for it. So remember what I said about supply and demand. If there is a high demand, there won't be any on the shelves. If there's a low demand, there'll be a lot on the shelves. That means you can't sell those shoes online for more money because you can still go into Foot Locker right now and pick up that pair for retail pricing. So you really need to look closely at the market and make sure you're only buying shoes that are collaborations, are limited runs, or that you just can tell there's a lot of hype and you know it'll sell out fast and that way there will be room to flip. Obviously for like the Yeezy, it's super easy. You know every Yeezy is gonna flip for the most part if it's like a 350 or a 7. 750. The 700 Wave Runner, I don't think that's going to have any flip value to be honest. It looks terrible, just like how the Calabasas and the Yeezy Cleats were. You got to really kind of tailor your expectations to what you see in the market going. So if people are saying those are really ugly, you can be certain that nobody's going to be buying those for more than retail. Another important thing you want to do when you're pricing your shoes is to take into account taxes, fees, and shipping costs you will have to use to send those shoes out. I know I hear it all the time. So you're selling these shoes for these prices but is that including taxes and fees or how does that work and for the most part i don't look at the number i'm setting it at i look at the number i'm gonna make so you can see that right over here the number that you will make that includes the 9.5 percent fee or whatever on goat plus the five dollar transaction and you also have to take in consideration like that 2.9 percent fee through paypal it's a lot of taxes and fees and stuff but honestly like even after all of that is said and done you will still make about the same money or maybe even a little bit more than what you could sell it for locally because the local pricing will obviously be like the lowest you can find because you don't need to worry about those fees and taxes and stuff but thankfully on goat like seriously you can sell shoes for a lot higher on there and people will buy them than if you sold it locally so make sure you kind of look at those fees and those prices and stuff and pay attention to the small number not to the big number your takeaway won't be that 450 your takeaway will be that like 410, 405 or whatever it is over here. So make sure you guys take that into account when you guys are pricing your shoes or else you'll lose out on a couple extra bucks here and there. What I do want to mention is that if you're going to try to sell your shoes, I always try to put it for the lowest possible bid on there. It will have some variations for Yeezys and stuff like say for like Yeezys and Yeezy creams or Yeezy turtle doves and things like that. There will be a lot of used shoes for there. So there's a lot of competition for what you're trying to sell for. So the best way to to make that sale is to put it at the lowest pricing. You have to really make sure you have a kind of idea of how much profit you want to make when you're pricing your shoes. So for Yeezys, obviously they will sell no matter what. So you can be a little bit stingier on your pricing. Don't go for the lowest price. Sell it for a little bit more. Sell it for higher in the median. That way you can make more value over time. If it's a shoe that is going to be a lot harder to move like a Nike SB, those don't really sell very quickly. So you really want to make sure your pricing is at like the lowest possible value. Another key tip for when you're pricing your shoes is that if a shoe doesn't sell within uh, maybe two or three weeks, I would lower the value on it. That way you can get more interest. People will really see like, oh, this shoe is less than a hundred bucks. I should probably take a look at it. Maybe I can flip it. And that's gonna be the mindset a lot of people have when they're trying to sell or buy shoes. So make sure you just kind of keep lowering your prices, not too much, but lowering it just a bit so that it gets the attention of buyers, okay? Another very important point that can't be taken for granted is that you need to start off your highest price higher than what you actually want okay so this goes more for when you're selling locally than it is i guess it kind of goes for ebay and goat too but for the most part it works for local sales so you never start your bid exactly what you wanted at so say i want okay say i want 400 dollars for this okay i want 400 i'm not gonna put on the pricing that i want 400 reason being is that maybe there's somebody willing to spend 420 430 450 for this shoe so i'm gonna put it not too high because people would be like this guy's trying to rip people off so nothing over 500, but I'm gonna put the shoe for 450. And that way you put o OBO or, or best offer and people will offer up. 
if somebody gives you something like say 430 that's thirty dollars higher than what you would have wanted in your price so you take that bid doesn't necessarily mean whatever you're putting out there you're gonna get but at least that higher number will give you more wiggle room of how much you can actually sell it for because if you sold this for 400 exactly there's gonna be a buyer like really quick so in terms of trying to make the most profit you can you really have to market it correctly so make sure you always start very high you're gonna have a whole bunch of low ballers and that's okay low ballers will happen no matter what goat app ebay stock x local it's gonna happen people will always try to find a steal even when the price is already low so that's why you keep your price higher than what you want not too much higher if you really want it to move then put it exactly the number you want okay again this isn't an exact science guys but that is the formula on how i price my shoes if i can't find a shoe on goat for like seeing the used prices and stuff then i'll go to ebay check those prices on the sold listing so very important on ebay you can pretty much list anything you want on there for any price that doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's selling for so if you go on that sidebar right here on ebay there's a sold listings you click on that it shows you exactly how much shoes have sold for in that same condition but yeah pricing is critical guys like if you price your shoe wrong people will not even like take a look at it if i see a yeezy for way higher than what i know the market price is i'm just going to keep looking like just keep scrolling not even paying attention to their shoe and that thing's gonna sit. So if you do not price correctly, you can be in a hole and have a whole bunch of shoes that you can't move. So just make sure you price it correctly the first time, follow these tips and you'll be a-okay. So this was episode four of Art of the Flip. If you guys like this video, hit that like button right down below. If you guys are not subbed to the channel, do not click that sub button. Go to the gleam.io link and hit sub through there. That way you get the entry, maybe get a free Yeezy, sell that for 450, start your reselling business, okay? So make sure you guys do that. I'm your professor, Professor Untied, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Art of the Flip. Take care. Aloha. Class is dismissed.